Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm walking through a tunnel. I'm not entirely sure if I'm meant to be here or not. I'm in Jersey and I'm walking through the tunnel which takes you from St. Saviour to St. Helier. This is not an old railway tunnel, but in today's video, we are going to explore one of the old railway lines of Jersey. The reason I say I'm not so sure if I'm meant to be here, there was a sign at the end, it said no pedestrians, but another sign said pedestrians this way. And um, I'm not the only person walking through, there's a man coming towards me, so uh, just let him get my Thank you. So as you can see, other people do walk through here. Um, I just thought it would be an interesting start to the video. So as I said, this was not an old railway, it's purely a road tunnel under the fort, but it seems a quick way into the city centre. What we're going to do, we're going to go and look for the old railway station. We're going to take a bus along the first section of the old railway because it's basically the same as the road and then we're going to walk the extension which I'm quite excited about so we're just coming out into the sunshine at the end of the tunnel. They say there was light at the end of the tunnel but there's quite a lot of light already in this tunnel and uh, it's a very hot day so I'm going to um, hopefully I'm thinking it'll be a bit shelter so it's pretty quite a good place to to go to explore the old grill. Yes, you want to look, it says no entry for pedestrians. Unless it's a one way, so when you're going that way, you're supposed to walk on that side, perhaps that's what it is. Anyway, that was the tunnel. I'm going to continue now to find the old railway station. Well, that's the fort behind us, which we walked through the tunnel underneath. This is the centre of St Helier, and there's the old railway station. It's not actually the original railway station building on the site. The railway for a fairly short-lived railway has had um, quite an interesting history. The first rails were laid, or it first opened as a railway in 1870 but then by 1874 the original railway company was bankrupt but it continued to run until 1883 now this was a standard gauge line it ran from here along the coast to St Alban my plan is we're going to do that section on the bus because basically the road runs the exact route it's from St Alban the extension that's the bit we're going to walk because what happened was in 1883 the company was taken over and they began to rebuild the railway and they rebuilt it to a narrow gauge of three foot six inches. So this is the station here. Like I said, it's not the original. If you have a look here, there's a little plaque telling you about the, that it's the old, okay, I'll look, the old Jersey Railway Company. So that's good to see that there. Let's go inside. It's quite hot and sunny. It's, around there is a bus station, just before we go inside actually. The funny thing is, there is a train of a sort there, a Lipputi train, a road train, which, um, you know, so you can actually get a train here, just not a train on the rails. So in my books, those sort of trains aren't really trains. If you look at this big picture on the wall here, you can see that's the station. This is probably taken from on the fort. The bus station is just down there, so that's where you can get a bus. The railway went all along the seafront there, and that's what we're going to do on the bus. When we get to St Alban, we'll have a look at the old railway station there, and from there we can continue up the old track. So it's quite pleasant in here. There's various restaurants and everything where the trains once terminated. I'm going to go and find a bus now and we're going to travel around the bay. I got off the bus not quite halfway between St Helier and St Oban at Millbrook because the old station is still here, it's a cafe. So that's the old railway station at Millbrook. There's even look, an image, a painting of a locomotive it says Millbrook. So there you have it, that is the old railway station. So you can imagine trains once stopping here. The railway would have continued all the way right round over to St Oban over there, that's where we're going and that's where the extension was, where the line turned inland away from the sea. Just looking across here while we're here, we can get quite a good view, there's Elizabeth Castle out in the sea and you can see the chimney of La Colette power station. I don't remember much of my last visit to Jersey because it was in 1990 but the one thing I remember is being at an air show on this beach and I got stung by a wasp right here in the eye and um, I do remember that bit and the sound of aircraft. So let's uh, I'm gonna find another bus and make my way to St Oban. Belong to Northern Language Train. 
So here we are in St Oban, got back on the bus, came round to here. We've come right round the base. We started off over there, you can just see La Colette power station and the fort which we came through the tunnel under. So the railway, imagine it would have come all the way around here. Now this point is a fairly interesting section. There was actually a form of junction here because as I said, the railway originally only went to St Oban, the Stanley Gauge Line. When they relayed it to narrow gauge and built an extension, what happened was the St Oban terminus was directly in front. The station building is still there, we'll see that in a minute, but the line turned that way, the extension. Now, to have used the old terminus just simply didn't work. There was a building in front of the buffer stops. So what happened, a new platform had to be built over here. So you effectively had the terminal platforms there, there was an overall roof just past where that grass is. That was the terminus. And then a junction would effectively come off here. There would have been a curved platform going round here, and the line took a very sharp sweeping curve and began a relentless climb up the hill, which we're gonna do. So from all along here, the line has effectively been a footpath. As I said, I came on the bus partly to save time and just because um, we could sort of see everything. But now we can't use the bus. I will come back on the bus when I finish, but along the road, but you kind of can't quite use the bus in the same way. So when we get to here, the line would have taken a curve round there. We're about to see the old railway station. So the platforms would have probably started about where this car park is and then very soon we should see the station building so yeah have a look there that is the old station building we'll see it very closely in a moment we'll see the front so then here is where the unusual platform three would have been on this sharp curve and you'll see how the railway extension would have traveled right round in front of the station building which was, a bit, was quite a new, unusual so yeah, the overall roof would have extended out there. And then here, looking a bit similar to what we saw over at St. Helier, we have an original station building. Or well, I say original, we have a station building. As I said, the line has had a few changes. So having a look there, that is the old station. There it is, so that's the, that would have been the ticket office. Quite an Italianate looking building. Yeah, that's your old ticket office in there. Quite a nice um, view when you'd have got off one of those trains, the St. Oban Harbour, to see. See the tide's right out. The sea itself's about half a mile away, it's the tide so far out. So imagine looking at a station and having a narrow gas steam train coming round here, and then it would have not quite crossed the road, but began its relentless climb. So the steam train would have, um, yeah, let's have a look. There we go, that's the old. Good view of the old railway station. The steam train would have come around here and gone up here, up out of the town on its climb. They did talk a few years ago of re rebuilding this section to two foot gauge and borrowing a steam loco from the, I think it was the Barla Lake Railway. That's the bus route I came on the bus to the airport. So I used that the Route 15 to get me here because it's about the most regular. We'll talk more about reopening and that but just imagine whether you'd have actually if it happened you'd have got on the train here I'm not sure but we're now this seems you know slightly steep for a road certainly this would have been steep for a railway as we leave the town centre behind and begin the walk so the walk itself officially begins when we get past these this car park here another interesting thing is that the Germans obviously took over Jersey I'll talk more about that soon. Oh no, look, let's have a look, look, this is... So, footpath goes that way, look. The railway went this way through a tunnel, but unfortunately, the tunnel looks to be closed off. I reckon then the Germans built this, this um, big concrete wall. It looks, um, they did reuse some of the railways here. So, that is the old tunnel. So we're actually gonna go around the outside. Oh, that'd been so exciting. To have walked through so i've got to find my way now to the other end of this tunnel i found the other end of the tunnel the path runs basically the other side of the rocks you can see how they've blasted this through solid rocks shame we can't walk through it i'm not entirely sure what's useful oh look at that it's like a, a hole there in the rocks it looks like it is used for something but that'd be a really cool part of the walk so what happened was the path came around here so we're following the track bed now 
it's um, it's quite a steep grade and it's about 130 as I said we are climbing from basically from sea level up and it was the climb for one and a half miles all the way up to the summit which we shall see we'll, we'll look for a few other stations on the way my plan is to get all the way to the other end of the line so we've continued climbing out of St Oban one interesting thing with Jersey is you get quite a few French sounding names have a look at that that to me is very French I know what Chemin I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly I'm probably not but I know that means railway basically so this is the old railway and it's the road so the railway and the road came quite close here looking out of the way because there's a car there possibly was a level crossing here because we just saw a car drove across we're going to continue up here between the you know, through road sign and the actual road itself so I'm going to follow the railway on and see what else we can find I'm continuing to enjoy walking along the railway through this rather shady section. The road is just there. The road's gradually climbing higher above us, so I expect there'll be a bridge or a tunnel at some point. I'm hoping we'll find more tunnels. I don't know too much about this. I am really discovering this as I go, which so this is me exploring and um, showing it to you, taking you with me. It's um, always like in, I enjoy any old railway walk. I always find them fascinating. This one really is a bit different because we're not talking of, you know, a line in Britain, a branch line or a former through route that was closed by Beeching in the 1960s. We're talking something that closed a lot earlier. What did I just say about a bridge or a tunnel? Have a look at that. There is. So it looks like the road takes a bit of a hairpin bend and goes over us in like that. So we're going to walk under this bridge. And you can still, to how obvious it is on camera, but we are climbing approximately 1 in 30, 1 in 40. We're climbing though, and we're going to be climbing for the next mile and a quarter or so. So, on this railway line, the trains you may be wondering what the trains look like. Well, I went this morning, I went to the Pallet Steam Motor and General Museum where they've got a few steam locos, industrial steam locos, none of which actually have anything to do with this line, but there is a model or a miniature sized model of one of the locomotives. Have a look at that now. So you can see, I know unfortunately the reflection on the glass made it not the most easiest thing to take pictures of, but that gave you an idea of what the locomotives will look like. That's a really nice view of that bridge now behind us. So they would have worked the line, pulling a few carriages. There were also some steam rail motors. To my knowledge, there were no diesel locos. They were built by various different companies. Remember the line? The first section of the line was originally standard gauge, so a locomotive was built by Dubs up in up in Scotland, and there were locomotives built by Sharp Stewart. Uh, interestingly, one of the locomotives that worked up here does still survive. Well, a few of the nameplates can be seen in the National Rail Museum in York, but one of the locomotives that worked this line actually does survive. But it's in South Africa. The reason it ended up in South Africa was because this was three foot six, and that's the gauge that the South African majority of the railways in South Africa are three foot six. There's a few two foot gauge line it's out in South Africa. And as you may know, some of the two foot gauge locos have come over to work on the Welsh Highland Railway and one or two others. So, but this is the other way around. The locomotive went from here to South Africa and it worked at the Victoria Falls Power Station, taking coal, I believe, to the power station. The locomotive did then get preserved in a museum, but unfortunately in South Africa they've got a terrible problem with people stealing bits, metal thieves, stealing bits off locos. There is talk of bringing it back here. If they could bring that loco back to Jersey, whether it'll ever run again, I don't know, but if, it'll probably end up in the Pallet Steam and General Museum, but it would be great to bring it back to Jersey. They might even be able to, you know, park it in the car park for a day back there so it could actually return to its original haunts. That would be a really nice thing. For the time being though, I'm just going to keep climbing on this very pleasant old railway. One thing we've not done yet is gone over a bridge. We've been under a bridge, we've seen a tunnel, because the railway was originally down at sea level, so there wasn't much need for bridges. But now if you have a look there, there's a little lane down here. In fact, let's, as soon as there's these steps, let's go down the steps off the railway track bridge for a moment and have a look at the first bridge we're going to go under. I think we did go under a culvert. There we go. Whether that's the original, but you can see clearly a rail bridge. We're going to pass over that in a moment. Interestingly, there's a wooden structure there to stop any bridge bashes. Unfortunately, in the UK, you have a lot of problems of railways being closed due to bridge bashes. 
Um, whether bridge brashes occur on the Channel Islands, I'm not entirely sure, but it can't actually delay any trains because there aren't any. So let's go over this. Oh, it's actually having some work done. Maybe there has been a bridge brush. I hope not, but anyway. So this is it's not the most exciting bridge I know, and uh, but it's the first bridge we've passed over. I think we might have passed over a culvert further back because I noticed a stream that appeared from outside or underneath the track. A lot of holm oak trees growing here, or evergreen oaks as they're sometimes known. We're always taking quite a sharp curve that way now, so I'm gonna keep walking and see what else I can find. I'm continuing to enjoy this walk. Still climbing up to, well the summit's gonna be just beyond the former Don Bridge station. Now, I mentioned that the line closed down in 1936. That was the end for passenger operations. You may know that Jersey was taken over by Hitler's forces during the war and they started to reopen the line. In fact, they reopened most of it, and they, but they built it to meter gauge. We don't really use meter gauge in the UK because time when most steam railways were around, metric wasn't really a thing. But in Germany and France and European countries, meter gauge is very common. Places like the Hearts are all meter gauge. But here on Jersey, we had this line rebuilt to meter gauge. But what actually happened was it wasn't for passengers. It was purely um, an industrial military railway. So they, um, they reopened this line. They built a branch to a quarry on the north of the island. I'm not going to try and explore that branch today, but you never know, maybe one day we might do that. We get to here now, and there's a former level crossing. In a funny way, cars don't have to stop for trains, but cars have to still stop here because there's a pelican crossing. Although um, there's nothing coming on to the cross anyway. So yeah, cars effectively, what would be really cool is they had gates that went down just to, like in a time-honored fashion as if it was still a railway. Anyway, I'm gonna continue now. Um, it looks like, well, this is Corbury. Apologies if I'm not spelled, spelled, pronouncing that correctly, but two and a half miles on, that's the end of the line. So I've got another two and a half miles of walking this railway on what is a, a rather hot day, but I'm enjoying it. It's the British summer, so I can continue walking now. I'm now walking through what I'm thinking you pronounce the Port Marquette Country Park. Apologies if, if that isn't how you pronounce it. And indeed, where we were back at that crossing, I think there may have been a little halt there, or there was a station called Port Marquette, and there was no trace of it, but looking at, um, you know, where, it would have been. I've got um, a few maps and that in my rucksack and every time I sit down at a bench I have a quick look. I reckon that was back there. We're continuing now up towards Don Bridge Station. Well, we've now reached a level section of line. The reason it's level is because this is the site of Don Bridge Station. I'm not entirely sure why it was called Don Bridge because it's in the area of Jersey called St Brellards but it's called Don Bridge. So you can just see the line looking that way, there was a level crossing there and it went down the hill. There was a cafe called Off The Rails, quite an appropriate name. I had an ice cream there. We continue through here and I've noticed there's a road bridge up ahead and then the gradient continues to climb. So we're not, we haven't reached the summit yet. I think they just built this bit on a, whether it's 100% level, I don't think it quite is, but on a slightly less severe gradient, I suppose to stop any chance of trains running away in the station because obviously you don't want that so we go under this bridge so it's no mistaking this is an old railway bridge so i must be coming to the end of the station platform so i expect well in fact i know there have been two platforms so trains could have passed each other it would have been mainly single track but this section would have been double track so i'm going to go under the bridge now and continue on up towards the summit and the end of the line so we're now on a not quite so exciting bit of track bed just a just less than a quarter of a mile beyond Dawnbridge Station, but we've reached the summit about here. I can see the line levels out slightly, and then I think in the distance it will start to drop. So we're about 200 feet above sea level. So from St. Oban, obviously that was sea level. We've climbed 200 feet. Didn't feel it. It did, it did seem, for, for a human walking, it wasn't much. It wasn't like walking up a steep hill. But you could see for a railway, the little steam locos, would have been working pretty hard. It would be great, like this, there is talk of them reviving it, although nothing's come of that for a while. 
Um, there was talk of relaying some of it as a two foot gauge line, which I think would be quite good because you could probably keep it open as a cycle path, stroke footpath as well. Um, and you could see a steam loco climbing those gradients once again. And it'd be a great tourist attraction for the island. I said how one of the locomotives does survive. Quite a few of them, I should have said, they went on to have a careers beyond their life on Jersey, but they have since been scrapped. Some of them went to the um, Western Cleveland and Porter's Headlight Railway over in Somerset. So some locos were there, but unfortunately they were all scrapped eventually as well. So the line is now going to begin going down. So let's keep going to the end. The old railway's taken on yet another different feel. It's turned into this Pine Avenue with golf course to this side and beyond there is the sea. We're effectively heading out onto a peninsula on the island, which is interesting to think, you know, they built the line to, well, pretty much nowhere. It's not like it kind of links a town together. The Jersey Eastern Railway, which went from, as I was saying earlier, went from Snow Hill to Gorey, that, that kind of links two places together. But now we've sort of really gone out, out into the countryside and we're just going to continue till we basically run out of land. So keep going down and we'll soon come to the sea. We're now descending at a similar steep gradient to what we came up. Now I'm not 100% sure if this is what it is, but I've noticed there's a bit of a hump here, whether this is potentially any remains of the old railway station at St Moyle. Um, it may well be, may not be, but it just looks a bit um, like it potentially could be. And looking at where the village is in relation to where the railway is, it just seems to tick all the boxes, but it may not be, and we are on quite a downhill gradient, so I'm not entirely sure on that one. There's no station roads, which is the obvious clue when you're looking at old railway lines in Britain. Anyway, we're gonna continue across the road and down to the end of the line. Regarding the old St Moore station, we've just literally come across the road. On a second thought, this section of track is flat. So I was thinking it might have been there because of the slight embankment. I wondered if it was like earth where they'd built a platform wall. The platform wall disappeared and it was the earth that filled it in that was still there. But here is flat, there isn't. And whether the camera's picking it out, but just beyond these trees, the line begins to descend. So I reckon he, here, or just over the other side of the road anyway. One of these sides is where I think St Moyle Station must have been. I've now got just under a mile now down to the end of the line, so I'm going to continue. We shall soon find, well, there's actually a junction coming up first and then we'll find the end of the line. And it's very quiet now, this part of the old railway. We seem to have been walking down a pine-lined avenue for the last, well, at least two miles. Now, here we get to the junction. The line straight on went to Lemoyer Quarry but that was fairly short-lived. It closed as early as 1899. Here, the line going that way, that's the line to La Corbière, or the station was simply called Corbière, but La Corbière is the southwestern point of Jersey. That's where the railway went to. I said it kind of went to nowhere. I suppose it could have taken tourists to that southwesterly point, so we're not going to do that line today. We're going to go down there and follow the line on to La Corbière. As we approach the end of the line, the railway suddenly becomes very scenic. You can see out, I'm not sure if those islands over there is possibly Guernsey. When I came on the ferry yesterday from Poole, I got quite a good view of um, Guernsey. I could also see France. I got quite a good view of um, Flamanville Nuclear Power Station in France. Let's just stop here and have a look at this view. It's a bit too good not to. So um, I, that's possibly, well, it's got to be some of the other Channel Islands over there. Um, so, we haven't got further to go now, we really are, the main bulk of Jersey is, is there, it's very hot on this peninsula, um, but I think we're very close, in fact we are not very close to the end, we've come to the end, look at this, I hadn't realised we were quite there, I can see what looks to me very much like an old station platform, something we haven't actually seen yet intact, I've been hoping to find an intact station platform ever since I started this video and here we are that to me looks like an old station platform and we've made it to Corbiere or La Corbiere it says on the map on this uh, poster it says Corbiere so this is the old railway station it's a listed building but it has also had permission 
them to build a modern extension, which uh, you can see there. There's also this prehistoric um, rock here, which is um, interesting. It's called Le Table de Mathas. So um, it's a granite slab, which is possibly like an old cabinet of um, I don't know, someone's buried there, maybe. I don't know. I did. Um, I was looking at doing this as a railway video, but interesting. So I, I suppose that was there the whole time the trains were running. It's got to be one of the hottest, most sun trapped, disused railway stations I have ever been to. It's, I mean, it's about 28 on Jersey today. It feels like about 30. It really is very hot. I want to walk down there to the end of the line. Let's just go over here to have a look at the front of the station. This is also where. The bus stop is, I think. So, yeah, look at that remote little bus stop in front of the old railway station. There's also a hotel. There's a tower built by the Germans. It's a bit, yeah, empty here, but just hot and got good views. Let's just go to the very end of the line, and then I'm going to have to get a bus back. I may have a while to wait. I think they're fairly regular down here. Shouldn't have to wait more than half an hour. Um, we can get drink anywhere because it's hot. Well, look at that. That's uh, the, yeah, so that's the station building ended there. And if it's modern extension, I'm not sure I'm overly keen on that, but anyway, at least the station survives. You get to here, so they have built this wall. The upper wall is obviously modern, I suppose that's to give the people who live there a bit of a garden. When we get to here, we can just see the slope of the end of the platform, and then what happens to the path? It, comes to a bit of a abrupt sort of end. A sign saying don't go down there. So we better come out here. There's a toilet block there. That's uh, handy to know. So if you ever walk in this line. Right, so well I think that brings me to well look at that that's a down to the lighthouse. Let's let's go down there and have a look. I think we should end the video with a real view. So I hope you've enjoyed this video exploring the old Jersey Railway. Um, I've enjoyed walking it, it has been a bit, it doesn't feel anything like as hot now as it did up there, it's a bit cooler down here. So here we are, ends with a view. So I can't let that car, let me go. It's kind of, well, look at that brutalist tower. That must be the tower that the Germans built, and here we are. We have literally come to the end of Jersey. Here's a lighthouse, I think it's like a causeway, you can probably drive across that, so that when the tide's out. So from La Cobia, the end of Jersey, just slightly down the hill from the railway station. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And what a view to say goodbye.